John Morant is expected to miss more time as the investigation between him and a firearm slowly come to a close. Meanwhile, Josh Hart has some choice words to say after a tough loss to the Charlotte Hornets. The Sacramento Kings are currently second in the West, and Pau Gasol finally gets his jersey retired. That and more will be discussed, so stay tuned. How's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel. This is Courtside Digest, bringing you the latest and greatest of NBA news. But without further ado, let's get into our first topic of the night. John Morant to miss more games. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been living under a rock this past weekend after a game against the Denver Nuggets, John Morant decided to go to a nightclub. And in that nightclub, he decided to take his shirt off and then go on Instagram Live and then wave a firearm around, which swiftly prompted an investigation of the NBA and the Colorado police. And usually in this sort of incident, they really want to know how the gun got there. Where where has it been? Did you bring it to the locker room uh, in, in Denver? Did you bring it on the plane? That that sort of thing. It's not illegal to own a firearm. It's just where that firearm has been. And at the time of this recording, there are currently no charges being uh, charged to John Morant over the firearm. They didn't have significant evidence, and he was initially given a two-game suspension, but it was just announced today from Woes that John Morant will remain away from Grizzlies for at least the next four games, the team says. Now, obviously, I think this is a personal reason, you know, that he wanted to take time away. He did say in his apology, you know, he apologized to the fans, the organization, friends, family, that, you know, this obviously was, was a mistake. You know, he was in the right headspace. He did say he needs to find better ways to deal with his stress that he does have. He does have a daughter. You know, he is a father. He He's a the number one player on his team. He just signed a $200 million contract. He has a lot at stake here. So I think taking some more time is, is a responsible thing for him to really try to figure it out. The Memphis Grizzlies only have about 18 or 19 more games until the playoffs. So not a lot of time to be messing around with a firearm in a nightclub on Instagram Live. I mean, we saw a few years ago when Gilbert Arenas brought a firearm into the locker room. He was given a 50-game suspension, which slowly led to him getting kicked out of the league. So this this is a good thing for John Morant that no charge is being pressed and that there's no 50-game suspension. But to take the extra time to just refocus yourself, figure it out. I mean, the Memphis Grizzlies are currently third in the West. But they're on a three-game losing streak, and right now the West is very close between the fourth and, like, tenth seed is, like, three or four games. But I think with Desmond Bain, Steven Adams, Darren Jackson Jr., and Dylan Brooks, I think those guys and the other guys on, on, on the team can really pull it together and try to win a few games until Ja comes back. They've got four games without him, four additional games without him, so hopefully they can try to figure it out and try to get some more wins to secure that third seed in the playoffs. But that's not all we got to say here today, folks. Oop. Josh Hart speaks out on excuses. Well, just the other day, the New York Knicks played against the Charlotte Hornets and ended in a tough loss. And a lot of people were asking if it had anything to do with fatigue. Coach Thibodeau is known to just run his players to just crazy. We saw that in Chicago with Jimmy Butler. So it was kind of alluded that maybe Coach Tibbs is playing the guys heavy minutes. But Josh Hart had this to say. Josh Hart, when asked about fatigue factoring into New York Knicks' loss to Charlotte tonight, you got people getting up at 6 a.m. doing 12-hour shifts. Those people are tired. For us, we're playing a game. We got to keep that per- keep that in perspective. And I agree with them. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. I'm I'm obviously not a professional athlete. I understand basketball as as any other sport is tiring on back to backs. You're traveling. You're practicing before games and even after games, and you do you do build a little bit of fatigue. But to keep it into perspective, you are playing the game of basketball as compared to those just normal day-to-day people who may have to do a 12-hour shift, getting up at 6 a.m., not coming home till 6 p.m. So shout out to Josh Hart. That's a good perspective to have. But the New York Knicks currently in a weird spot in the in the East right now. I want to say that, that they're in a pretty good spot for the playoffs, but you definitely want to hopefully get a few more wins to just secure that spot before you slip into the play-in, before you slip out of the play-in. Like I said earlier, only 18 or 19 more games for some of these teams. Anything can really happen. You can win them all, lose them all, win half. You're in the play-in, you're in the playoff, you're in the lottery. Who knows what could happen? But our next topic of the night is Kings now top two seed in the West. Now, I know in my last video, the audio cut out probably at the worst time where I was singing the praises of the Sacramento Kings. If you could read lips, you knew what I was saying. But I'll say it again here. Hopefully, the audio doesn't mess up this time. But I'm the Sacramento Kings are not frauds. The Sacramento Kings are here. They are ready. It has been 16 long years since they have been in the playoffs. And I know I've been one of the many haters and doubters of the Sacramento Kings. 
but I'm loving what I'm seeing. You got De'Aaron Fox. You got some bonus. You got so many other young guys on that team to just run it together. I, I saw a quote the other day or like some stat where the Sacramento Kings current offensive rating is the best offensive rating in NBA history. Fact check me if you want, but that is insane when you have only a few fringe all-star players, but no real superstars, no no Hall of Famers currently on that team. They're just getting it out the mud, game to game, day to day, just stacking up those wings. And I got to throw this up here for y'all. The date is March 7th, yesterday, 2023, and the Sacramento Kings are in second place in the Western Conference by my man Rob Perez, worldwide world. I, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a fluke. It ain't no joke. The Sacramento Kings are a team who are here to make a push into the NBA playoffs. Now, I did say in my last video that apparently the Lakers do want to see the Sacramento Kings in the first round. They think it's going to be an easy dub for them. It's a young team, a young, un inexperienced team. None of them have real playoff experience outside of Sabonis. Easy win for the first round. And I would say so too, but as we're winding down the end of the season, the Sacramento Kings are proving you they are not frauds and that they are legit. And if you want to come see them, hey, we'll give you four quick one or seven long games. Like how you want it, gentlemen, sweet. The Kings want all the smoke. It doesn't matter who you put right in front of them, and I am here for it. But into some more less than the savory news, we got some brutal Zion Williamson update. As you all know, Zion Williamson has been out for quite some time now. I heard it's been his back, or it's been his foot again. A whole lot of issues with Zion, and I want to say it was a hamstring, actually, and it's been... Reported that, you know, oh, he's about two weeks away. Oh, and in those two weeks, oh, he's two weeks away. But we do have a, 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 another update. Per woes, Zion Williamson, the hamstring injury, will miss a minimum of two more weeks, the Pelicans say. Like I said, it's been two weeks here, two weeks there. We don't know. He's out for the season. A whole lot of conflicting information. But as Woes tweeted just before this video, Zion will be out for at least another two weeks. What does it mean for the Pelicans? I want to say they're currently 10th in the West. Welcome to the lottery. I mean, you can try to make the play in. You're probably not, probably not going to go far. I think it really speaks to just the talent and just the incredible just skill of Zion Williamson. That team was top four at one point in, in the season for a good bit before his injury. And so without him, you see the impact. You see the, the lack of scoring and the lack of defense. And the team just dwindled down to around ninth or tenth place. Hopefully they can turn around. Hopefully Zion gets healthy and can come back and actually help the team. Maybe it's too late this year. Try again next year. And hopefully we won't be asking ourselves in a year or two, is Zion Williamson the real deal or is this another Greg, Ogden, Greg Oden incident? And I really don't hope so. I like Zion. He's a great player. The Pelicans is a great team. You got, you got, man, you got Larry Nance Jr. I'm, I'm, I like my big guys. I like my centers. I like Larry Nance Jr. You got CJ McCollum. You got a couple other guys there too. Jonas Valanciunas. Like the team's good. They got the right pieces. Trey Murphy, man, I can just rattle them all out. But without Zion, they are missing that key piece that just holds it all together. So hopefully in two weeks he'll be back. If not, you just sit him out for the rest of the season. Try again next year, and, and you just hope that it isn't too late. But our last topic of the night, Pau Gasol jersey retirement. All real basketball fans know that about three years ago, January 26, 2020, we lost the late, great Kobe Bryant in a helicopter accident. Kobe Bryant did win three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships with Shaquille O'Neal, but later in his career, he did win two back-to-back -back with Pau Gasol, who is arguably one of Kobe's greatest teammates that he ever played with. And the other day, they finally gave him his jersey retirement ceremony where they did hang up his jersey in the Raptors next to Kobe Bryant. Co or Pau Gasol's number 16 to, uh, next to Kobe Bryant's number 8 and 24. And... If the picture was bigger, you'd see on the left of the number eight jersey, you do have Shaquille's jersey. So you got Kobe Bryant right in the middle between Shaq and Powell. And if you know Kobe, you know Shaq. And if you were around to watch their championship runs, then you know Kobe Bryant always gave Pau Gasol all the credit. I, you know, many videos there are of Kobe Bryant saying, you know, I don't win those two without Powell. And I, just, I, I thought it was great. Powell Gasol gave a very good speech about Kobe Bryant, how he still going to carry his legacy and just be a good man, be a good person, and help take care of his family while he's gone. It was wonderful. Tear, tears in my eyes. It was, it was one of those heartfelt moments. But that's all we got for you today, folks. I'm glad you made it this far. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for Courtside Digest. We got some shorts on the way, some crazy funny videos. You, you, you can watch Ben test my NBA knowledge. It ain't much, but it's still funny to watch. But y'all take care out there. Peace.